Hey YouTubers, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to video number 27 of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, December 17th, 2010. It's minus 13 degrees Celsius today and the wind chill is around minus 20 or more. It looks pretty cold out there. So here's my backyard that I showed you last week when we only had a couple inches, but now we've got about eight inches, I'd say. So it's winter here for good now. I couldn't believe it on the news that last week, a place in Ontario called Lucan got like five feet of snow. That's unbelievable. So before I get started today, I want to show you my new table that I just built. It's got a metal top here and it's going to come in handy in the garage here. It sure cleaned it up in here and I will be posting a video soon on how I built it. Before I start the questions today, I want to thank a YouTuber called Carrick6423. He sent me a whole pile of technical information and manuals on different engines, so I appreciate that. So here's what he sent me. They're just older manuals like that. One's on the steel. So you can find a lot of good little tips in all this information. I especially like this manual here because you can always learn something new by reading them. And there's a whole pile of other stuff there. So thanks again. And thanks again to Jim2035 who sent that Poulin chainsaw that I made the videos last week of. And I also want to thank everybody who sent in contributions. Now my first question today is a YouTuber has an MTD snowblower. And what he's wondering is if there are guides that go around the belt for the auger. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now we're talking about the auger belt, usually it's the belt or belts on your blower that are closest to the auger housing here. And when we're talking about the guides, we're talking about this pin here that's bolted here and you can adjust it and it keeps the belt from coming out too much. Now that's a belt guide here. He's asking if there should be some on a particular MTD model that he has. Now here's a Mastercraft which is made by MTD. Now I'm going to talk about this specific type of snowblower and this one here is the same thing. It looks different but it's made the same. Just different color and stickers on it. Now these blowers here have two belts for the auger and one belt for the drive. Now this blower here does not have belt guides in the form of a little metal pin that comes around and keeps it from falling off the pulley. For this blower here, the plastic cover that goes here acts as the belt guide. So this is the cover that goes over the belt, as I just mentioned. And you can see the shape here where the belts would come around. So this is a sacrificial part. It's pretty cheap to replace. And you can see where the belts have rubbed on the sides there. And this plastic piece will keep the belts from coming off the pulley. Now if yours is worn right through here and you can see the belts, you should replace it to prevent them from coming off the pulley and also to prevent snow from getting in there and turning into ice. Now what happens on these MTD blowers sometimes is because they're made of thinner metal than some other blowers is that the metal can get weak right around here where it joins to the drive unit on both sides and what happens sometimes is when you go to use the blower is this part here will actually move toward the back while this moves toward the front. So it'll go like this and then the belt will be disaligned from the engine because the pulley's hooked on the auger housing and the engine on the rear part of the blower. So what tends to happen is when you use the blower sometimes is that the engine's gonna tilt up a bit because the metal's weak and bending forward and the belts are gonna come off. They're just gonna come right off like that. Now I get a lot of MTD blowers that that problem happens to them and what I have to do is replace the front auger housing, the shell that holds everything in because it's rotted. Also sometimes the gearbox here gets cracked over here and as you can see I've repaired it with a piece of angle iron on both sides. It was cracked all the way down and thus the front auger housing was tilting forward when I was using the blower. It's pretty thin metal to weld. It's almost impossible when it's rotted. So the best thing to do is to just buy new parts. Even to repair it the way I did with the angle iron is a lot of work. And I only repaired it like that because it wasn't cracked too bad and my auger housing was still good. So at that point it was worth doing. But if your auger housing is rotted near the connection here and the gearbox isn't too good and it's cracked, then you should replace the parts. It's gonna save you a lot of aggravation because when you blow a set of belts, it's not cheap. I've seen people just replace the belts 
and like two minutes later when they go to use their blower the belts fall off again and they get damaged so it's not worth it save yourself the aggravation replace the parts if your blower's worth repairing it's not cheap buying the shell or the gearbox at the back even without all the parts in them so calculate to see if it's worth repairing the blower or just selling it for scrap or for parts to somebody and buying yourself a brand new blower usually when all those parts are rotted or cracked it may be time to just buy a new blower Another question I often get in regards to snowblowers is that they often surge. What I mean by that is that the RPM of the engine will go up and down, up and down. Now I find this really annoying. It's very annoying to hear an engine do that. It sounds bad. But the main thing causing that problem is a fuel issue. Usually there's something in the carburetor that's preventing the fuel from flowing through the carburetor the way it should. So in essence, the engine is starving for fuel. That's why it's going up and down, up and down. And sometimes you're gonna to have to run it on the choke too when it does that. Now here's a couple carburetors. That's a lawnmower carburetor. That's a snowblower carburetor from a Tecumseh engine. Now sometimes an easy solution to that is to take off the bowl nut underneath your carburetor. Some will just have a fixed bowl nut like that and it's got a jet in there. And when you take it off is you clean the little holes here. That hole goes right through. And there's a tiny hole up here that you can clean as well. So make sure that's clean, put it back in, and sometimes that'll do the trick for you. Now if it still won't work after cleaning the fixed jet, you may have to take the carburetor apart and investigate further. I do have videos that show how to do that. Now if you've got this carburetor on your snowblower, it's the older type carburetors with the adjustment screw at the bottom here, sometimes by simply turning it out one eighth of a turn or more, it's going to stop surging. So again, if that doesn't do the trick, you may have to take your carburetor apart and repair it. Also on these Tecumseh engines, make sure that the fuel cap is good or venting. This is the newer style gas cap with the rubber thing inside here. If you have the old cap with the metal dish and the dish is missing, what can happen is that your fuel tank's not going to vent properly and thus that could cause surging or hunting as we may say. Now when you buy a new cap it's going to be this one. It's revised. It does not have a metal dish inside and this is what it looks like and that'll solve your problem if that's the case. Also what happens sometimes is a bit of snow gets in the carburetor because there's no air filter preventing that and it can turn into water get into the carburetor either through there or your gas tank and if there's a tiny bit of water in your carburetor, it can cause it to surge up and down like that. Sometimes just taking the carburetor apart, letting it dry, draining the fuel from the fuel tank to make sure it's not contaminated, that can also remedy the problem. So these are only little tips. They're not always the solution to that problem, but most of the time it does do the trick. And like I said, I do have videos that show how to rebuild and clean your carburetor on a Tecumseh snowblower engine. So go to my channel and check for that. Also, I have a video called how to clean the fixed jet on your snowblower. That will show you how to clean just the fixed bowl nut. So what I'll do is I'll put the links under the information of this video on how to clean the carburetor on your snowblower. So if you want to go check it out, just click on the links below the video. So thanks again for watching. Keep sending the questions. If I don't get to your questions, it's not because it's not important. It's because I don't have time to get to it. Thanks for watching, have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week.